Hey YouTube, this is The Art of Prepping. Let's talk about uh, items that would not be recommended to be stored in your short-term bug out bag. Items that could potentially be deadly. You know, this sounds kind of dramatic, but you know, if you hear me out and actually watch the entire video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, some of the items I'm gonna mention may sound a little bit out there. Uh, but uh, it's not like I'm just sitting here trying to make up a list. Uh, I've compiled this list based off of questions and uh, various comments over the past few years. Uh, people asking me if they should or should not include these items. And in my opinion, once again, these items should not be included just for the very common sense that a, a bug out bag is more about egressing and getting from point A to B. It's like a relocation kit. And it's not all about trying to build a camp with it or uh, all this survival type of related activities. It's basically just to keep you alive, to get from A to B, and that's it. So let's go ahead and dig into it. The first is flares. You know, flares is something that I've kept in my kits for a while, but uh, there's countless stories of flares going off in people's bags. And uh, I've never had the problem happen to me, and I don't know anybody personally that this has happened to but i've read quite a few stories about this and i can kind of see where they're coming from that uh, it's really just an unnecessary risk and yes flares are awesome in very cold climates to get a fire started and yes they're awesome for for getting attention or to warn other people of a hazard but uh, flares can be a bit bulky and if they're not stored properly they always have that potential to be a hazard so it's not that you couldn't use this, but just be mindful um, of how to store it and what kind of container and so forth. And uh, I know that a lot of people do not have dedicated storage containers for their flares. Sometimes they just throw them in the bag and that's not recommended at all. So just be aware of flares. If, and if you can just avoid using flares, uh, there's actually LED flares now and other types of signaling devices that I would highly recommend over uh, the traditional chemical flares. The next is tannerite. Tannerite is a type of explosive uh, and it's usually used in the world that I've, uh, I'm aware of uh, for these exploding or interactive targets. And people have uh, tannerite built into a target and from a distance they shoot the target. If they hit the target, the target blows up and it causes a, a neat explosion effect and you know people like that. Um, I've personally never gotten into Tannerite, but uh, some people think it's good to keep it in your bug out bag so you can make a, a makeshift explosive device if someone was following you back to your bug out location and they have all these fantasies of how they would do, go about doing that. I think it's just taking unnecessary risk um, and I don't really condone making bombs or nothing like that. I, I think we can kind of uh, just avoid this whole product. The next is canned goods. I think obviously it's for the bulk and the weight um, of that product versus other food products. And uh, I think if you look at the calories, most canned goods, uh, it's it's a lot of, once again, the bulk and weight for the calories you get. So it's, it's not recommended at all. So I would go with more like freeze dried and dehydrated food formats, <clears throat> even ready to eat formats uh, over, over canned goods any day. A Dutch oven and cast iron pots and pans. I mean, once again, it's a bulk and weight issue. Um, this could be potentially deadly, and there's quite a few of these on the list that are bulk and weight related that are deadly because it can wear you down through the day. So when you're worn out and you're tired, you're less able to be adaptive and to resist threats. Uh, if you're worn out, you're not going to be able to fight as well as you could if you were more rested. So basically, it could be it could be deadly. You know, something as simple as just having too much in your backpack uh, can uh, do a lot of wear and tear on your body as well, and you could pull a muscle or damage a body part uh, that you would have not had that damage if you didn't have that extra ten pounds or whatever in your bag. The next is a toolbox. Uh, obviously, this is common sense. Uh, more weight related issue here. Uh, tool sets, uh, hammers. All these things are, it's just over the top. It's ridiculous. You got to remember, this is an egress bag. Uh, this is not a, a bag to, to live out of for the rest of your life. You know, this is, 
This is an A to B egress bag. So we're not building houses here. Um, but it would be somewhat smart to have at least some type of multi-tool, maybe at the most a folding handsaw, some duct tape. It doesn't have to be a, a whole row of duct tape. It could just be like 10 to 20 feet of duct tape. And uh, also cordage. Once again, it doesn't have to be a, a hundred foot hank of, uh, you know, like paracord. It could be something like 25 to 50 feet, you know, of cordage. That, that might be all you need. So just leave the toolbox at home and just grab some of the, the really essential tools and you should be fine. The next uh, item class would be a heavy and bulky weapon systems. Like just for example, this is kind of extreme, but I'm sure most, most people wouldn't even pick this uh, as a bug out weapon, but the M1 Garand with like 500 rounds of ammunition. I mean, that's just so over the top. It's just ridiculous, but it makes the point, you know, something like that would wear you out in the first mile or two of your bug out. And you would probably have to just spend the night just to recuperate. So don't do that. If you can, you may even want to avoid even a long gun unless you're in a very hostile environment and just go with a, a handgun instead. And you don't need that much ammunition. You know, once again, unless you're in a very hostile environment. So I would say one or two spare magazines or speed loaders, that might be all you need. So just to consider uh, that. The next is a full-size reference or special, specialty books. Uh, that's just going to be so ridiculous to have all this weight. Books are heavy. I have books that are over 10 pounds and that would just be so silly to have one of those. And I have some really large, uh, you know, prepping and survival reference books. And they would just be the worst thing to bring that or put that in my bug out bag. So if you just have to have reference material, they have pocket size, uh, general use references. They even have like survival references. And it would be even better if you could get maybe it like in a brochure format. So it's all condensed and very, very lightweight. That's the way to go. So avoid full-size reference books. Uh, the next is gas mask. Now, of course, if the threat involves some type of chemical and, and you know, in your area, then obviously this is something that should be, you know, carried with. But in most situations, I mean, probably well over 90% of the time, if you have to bug out, you're not going to need a gas mask and spare uh, filters. I mean, all that adds up. That stuff can be very bulky. And maybe not that heavy, but it certainly can be cumbersome to have with you. So in most cases, just leave your gas mask at home. The next thing is excessive water. Now, a lot of people say, man, you can never have enough water. Well, you know, ideally, it's great to have 10 gallons of water with you. But can you carry 10 gallons of water? Water is really heavy and it is somewhat bulky. So, I mean, at the most, maybe a gallon of water, but even then, that's, that's pushing it for a lot of people. I'd say, you know, shoot for about a half a gallon that you keep on your, on your person or in your bag. The next is glass containers. It doesn't make sense to carry glass. You know, it can, it can break. Now, some glass is pretty resilient, but why take the chance? If you could have a stainless steel container, or a titanium container, uh, even an aluminum t container. Just avoid glass products, you know, because if it's going to have that potential to break, it could injure you or someone else, and it may not be there uh, when you need it. The next is trendy, expensive clothing or footwear and accessories like sunglasses, watches, hats. You just want to keep all that trendy stuff at home. You want practical stuff that's just common, common civilian wear. You know, you want to, in fact, just go to Walmart, even though I'm not a fan of Walmart, but or some kind of store like Walmart that just has general goods and just buy some of the most generic stuff that, you know, doesn't have logos or, you know, name brands printed on the clothing or the accessories, you know, and don't wear flashy stuff. 
You know, you don't want a, a gold Rolex on your wrist when you're bugging out. You just don't want that. You know, you might want like a Timex, some kind of $20 Timex or something. And the next thing is uh, sandbags. Uh, I've actually gotten quite a few people ask me about this. And they say, well, we're not talking about actually, you know, carrying sandbags filled with sand in our bag. We're just talking about the actual sandbag itself, just the, you know, the container, you know, the, the vessel that you can put things in like dirt or sand or whatever rock. And uh, my question is, why would you need sandbags if you're bugging out? You're not going to actually stay anywhere long enough to actually build something. So it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So uh, once again, maybe for like a, an extremely long term, you know, survival pack, uh, maybe that could be something you put in there, uh, but not for a bug out bag. The next is perishable food. You know, you wouldn't want five, you know, pounds of apples, you know, or something that's even more perishable in your bag. Uh, it doesn't make sense, especially if things need to be uh, at a certain temperature to be consumed safely. You definitely don't want that. So leave those things at home. And once again, go with things that are ready to be eaten and that um, have a good tolerance to a wide range of temperatures. And, you know, basically have a good shelf life. The next is a tactical military looking gear. Um, I would advise to find a civilian version or at the least domesticate whatever you have. And it, so make it kind of look like a camping or a hiking piece of gear. You know, you don't want anything really that looks too military or para paramilitary. You want it to always look somewhat of a civilian type of piece of gear. That's just in case if you come upon other people you don't uh, really raise any kind of red flags or uh, get any undesirable uh, attention. Now, the next thing is going to sound kind of silly, but a samurai sword or any type of other sword. Uh, some people would also say like machete and stuff like that. Now, in some locations, a machete isn't the worst idea if you have like a lot of brush. But what's really asked most time is like some type of defensive sword. And I think people just either play too many video games, you know, with all due respect, or watch too many movies, or maybe they just collect swords and they're just trying to maybe get another reason to buy another sword, trying to find justification. But I know that in the medieval times and even before that, swords were used as a real tool, defensive tool. But uh, a lot of those are pretty big and bulky and heavy. And yeah, they're deadly, of course, uh, but there's a lot of other options out there uh, for defensive use. And I would not recommend a sword. Um, you know, some people practice with the sword. It's their hobby. I mean, maybe in rare cases, if that's what you're into and you have a lightweight option, I mean, you know, I guess go for it, you know, if it's just your thing. But I'd say just kind of avoid that. There's no reason for all that. So... That's just my two cents on that. But once again, if you've already made up your mind on that, you know, you're going to do whatever. But swords are kind of something that I think um, just isn't necessary for a bug out in like 99.9% .9 of the time. So the next thing I want to talk about is alcohol. Now, you couldn't use alcohol for, for medicinal purposes and for other reasons too, you know, but uh, there are a lot of people that in a stressful situation, and this may not be you, so, you know, you may be able to carry alcohol and not have a problem, but the likelihood of you using it is probably going to be low to begin with for medicinal purposes and so forth, but there are a, a group of people out there that if they have alcohol, they're going to consume it, and especially if they get stressed out, so it's the same people that, that may, uh, that may smoke, they, uh, during when they get more stressed out, they smoke more. And if you have a little problem with alcohol or maybe a large problem with alcohol and you have alcohol on you, and when you're in a stressful situation like bugging out, you may find yourself trying to take a lot of breaks. A lot of breaks that, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of breaks that uh, may involve a, a sip or two here and there of alcohol. And uh, you may find yourself going a little too far and getting you know, a buzz or getting drunk in, in, in the middle of your bug out. And that's really not desirable. 
So you put yourself at major risk. You know, that could be deadly. And so don't do that. The next is video games. Now, some people say if you have kids and stuff, you need to have some distractions in your bag or in their bug out bag. And I totally agree. But the thing about video games is that it uses batteries. And a lot of video games aren't so heavy, but they can be sometimes a little bulky depending on what you know game they are. But really, the problem is, is that you're trying to be as stealthy as possible. And I would say that there's always that possibility that the sound from a video game could bring unwanted attention. Now, some of you guys say, you know, you can turn the sound off or turn it really low and so forth. But once again, I think that there are other options for short-term distractions that don't require batteries uh, and uh, things that put out light and sound that could possibly give, uh, you know, your position away, you know. So just consider that. The next is uh, a fake ID and fake money on your person or in your bag. Uh, not a good idea. If you do run into like law enforcement or other type of government officials and your your stuff is checked, you know, people go through your bag. Maybe it's martial law or some kind of who knows what. Maybe they have, there's a curfew and you're, and you're caught, you know, in an area. And maybe you didn't even know that there was a curfew, but maybe you're just cutting through an area trying to get to your bug out location and you get, you know, uh, detained and they find stuff like that. They find uh, different types of IDs and they find fake IDs, for example, and fake money. You're going down, you know, so don't even, don't even do that. Some people think it's just good though to have fake ID and especially fake money. Cause if you get, you know, someone's trying to rob you, you can just give them, uh, you know, fake money and, especially if it's really well done fake money, you can possibly, possibly, you know, um, buy yourself some time or, uh, maybe even convince someone for at least at the, in the short term that it's real money. You know, sometimes things happen in the, in the kind of like low light conditions and, uh, in low light conditions, you know, fake money that's done well, uh, can, can kind of come off as real money. I mean, it kind of looks, looks pretty legit. So, I just wouldn't do it though. You know, it's not only illegal, but it's just not smart because if you do get caught uh, either by the criminal or, you know, law enforcement, uh, it's just bad all around. So if you're going to, you know, have something set up, consider a decoy wallet and put a couple of real dollars in there. And that's going to be a lot smarter than some kind of uh, decoy money and decoy ID. And lastly, Number 20, game traps and snares. Now, some people might not like for me to say that you shouldn't have snares in your bug out bag, but I think that both the snares and the, you know, traps are just, it's ridiculous. If you're bugging out and you're moving, you're on the go and go. I mean, you may stop somewhere for a few hours to take a nap or rest, but it, if you're like a day or two away from your bug out location, it doesn't make sense to set up traps. I mean, it, it can take days or weeks for animals to find the trap or to be comfortable to, to get in back in that area once you've been there. And there's a whole, there's a whole science behind this anyways, you know. Um, the whole idea that, you know, animals are going to be, you know, comfortable with your scent in the area and they're going to, it, it's, it's complicated, you know, and you should look into this. It's very interesting how all this works, but most, um, you know, trappers say it takes about two weeks on average, depending on the animal to move back into an area after you've been in it because they are aware that something was disturbed or you were there and they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to be, want to be prey. And so they avoid the area. Now, it just doesn't make a lot of sense with the bulk and weight of, of large iron traps to have that to begin with. That's just a no brainer. But some people say just a little bit of wire to make some wire snares. There's no harm in that. You know, I mean, Hey, if it makes you feel better to have it, go for it. But I think it's pretty much useless. I mean, the only reason I would have that is if I believed that there was a high possibility of me, you know, having a survival situation during a bug out. And I just was stuck out there a lot longer than planned. And I just needed that to increase my chances of getting some kind of food. But even then, you're probably going to have a very low chance 
uh, unless you're just like a professional uh, trapper uh, to get anything. You know, you, you really have to know what you're doing. So these are my thoughts, and hopefully this was helpful. These were 20 things not to store uh, that could be potentially deadly uh, in, you know, in the context of a bug out bag. So let me know in the comment section what you believe uh, about these, uh, these different pieces of, uh, of gear. Uh, do you have anything that you would like to add? As always, thanks for watching.